The Rainbow Child 2. Well, she was a redhead, and she was, uh, she lived in America of Greek family. Her name was Celeste Angelides. And she'd, um, from a young age, Celeste had known she was special, you know. And one day when she was listening to Whip It by Lunch Money Lewis, oh, Jesus, light came into her. She saw a rainbow in the sky and, you know, sort of El Shaddai's voice was saying, in, you know, you've got work to do. About time you got to it. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Because she, when she was younger, she'd had a bit of an epiphany when she was about nine. And, oh, what's all this? And it was a bit of a fantasy for for about 30 seconds. And when she came out of it, and she could never quite remember, but she always remembered that those things she couldn't remember about that encounter. And it's like, what was all that about? She was the rainbow child. She had a destiny. She had work to do. Hero work. In some ways, salvation work, in some ways, but mostly hero work, heroine work. She was a heroine, was Celeste Angelides, and... She was, you know, the shine and glory of the rainbow, the rainbow warrior, the rainbow queen, the rainbow king when it was a bloke, but she was a queen at the moment. The rainbow light. And she was touched up by the spirit of God just to make sure she'd read the rainbow Torah, Genesis 1, 1 to 11, 9. Read that a few times to get your ethics under control. But I already know who you are, and I already know what you like, said the Spirit of God to her heart, and you're already chosen for the job. Just read it a few times to touch up, because you read it when you were younger, so read it again, and don't forget. And Celeste Angelides, she burst onto the scene like a shining rainbow throughout the USA, and she was a New York girl, New York City, proud and strong. Not an L.A. queen. She was New York, and she collected comics, ironically, as well. And she listened to pop music, for the most part. A little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of this and that. And she liked rainbow cartoons, and she collected Barbie dolls, and My Scene dolls, and Bratz dolls. And uh, she, she, was, she was pretty cool, and she was 18, turning 19. And she lived with her mommy and her daddy did Angelides, and Daddy, Mr. Angelides, Mr. Ralph Angelides, and her mummy, Mrs. Angelides, Mr. Angelica Angelides. Ralph thought that was a cool name for the Angelides clan to marry. And uh, they were successful sort of business people, not hugely rich, but they were, they were middle upper. And uh, they had their own bungalow, their own home, which they owned in New York City, in an outer sort of suburban, suburban reality. But she'd get into town regularly, get into into Times Square and Manhattan, and she'd traipse around Times Square and Manhattan, just soaking it all up and soaking up, being in the centre of the world and the centre of glory and being in the scene and buying things from the news agents, little colourful pens, multicoloured pens, and little little postcards and magazines and magnets, which she, magnet things which she put on the fridge, and little knickknacks. She collected a lot of knickknacks, and she'd buy books on n the New Dawn magazine and the Nexus magazine, and even New Scientist and things like that, and she'd buy some New Agey stuff and sometimes biblical archaeology magazines like that, and she'd be really cool and seen, and she'd be happy and hip and positive happening, and she had friends, and she was cool, and she was, an, she was hip. And she sometimes felt for the disaffected in society, the ones who were the outcasts. And one of the things that the Rainbow Child knew she was, that she took care of everybody, but she also sought out the outcasts, because they weren't always accepted, and everybody needed love and everybody needed a home. And sometimes it was foul creatures called Illuminati priests who needed to be confronted because they were bad boys. And she knew that was a work because the spirit had mentioned, don't forget the dark side. Someone has to fight it. 